22 years old tourists. They go to Panama on this hike eight years ago and were never seen alive again. Ouders van Chris Kremers en Lisanne Vroon zijn er nu van overtuigd dat hun dochters in Panama zijn omgekomen door een. Ik denk wel dat op grond van het onderzoek wat we gedaan hebben. We eigenlijk tot de conclusie zijn gekomen dat uh, een ongevalscenario het meest waarschijnlijk is. Ik got een e-mail dat literally says kill. They killed the Dutch girl's mother. Every year a huge number of people simply disappear. Every year hundreds if not thousands of cases of disappearances end up in the police archives. Of course, not all of these cases can be considered mysterious or puzzling, but from time to time there are cases so full of strange events that ultimately no one is able to connect all the dots and the mystery of the disappearance remains unsolved forever. Today we will take a deep look at one of such cases. We will take a look at the disappearance of two young Dutch girls, Chris Kramers and Lisanne Froon, which took place in 2014. We will take a look at the disappearance, which to this day no one has been able to explain, and if anything, the sheer amount of truly strange factors has provided instead of answers only more questions. Chris Kramers, born on August 9, 1992, in the city of Amersfoort, and Lisanne Froon, born on September 24, 1991, in the same city, can be safely called inseparable friends. The girls during their studies lived in the same dormitory and worked in the same cafe. It's precisely thanks to this that they became so close with each other. After graduation, they came up with the idea of a joint vacation and choose Panama as their destination. Of course, they mainly wanted to relax, but they also planned to improve their Spanish and volunteer to teach local children English. The plan was for the whole adventure to last six weeks, but as you will see in this video, sometimes our plans change whether we want them to or not. Chris and Lisanne arrived in Panama on March 15, 2014. They spent the first two weeks of their vacation in the area of Bocas del Toro, where they decided to relax, take advantage of the paradise and finally rest properly. The girls spent a lot of time on the beach admiring the local nature, and because they were both very friendly, they quickly met new friends with whom they visited local parties and bars at night. Of course, they also remained faithful to their main goal and diligently were learning Spanish. On March 29th, Chris and Lisanne finally arrived in the town of Boquet, which was the final destination of the trip. This is where they were supposed to spend the next month living with one of the local families and teaching English as volunteers. Unfortunately, the plans became slightly complicated due to a misunderstanding and the school where they were supposed to teach scheduled their arrival with a one-week delay. We can learn about this situation from the journals in which they carefully described almost every day. And so, the girls unexpectedly received a whole week of extra time off. They quickly came to the conclusion that instead of sitting and waiting, it would be nice to travel and discover the beautiful surroundings of the area. On April 1st, they started the day by exploring the town. In the photos found later, we can actually see how the girls spend their time visiting local cafes or restaurants. They also scheduled a guide for April 2nd, who was supposed to safely take them to the trail called El Pianista, which was very often visited by tourists. However, the next day the girls didn't show up at the agreed location and didn't return home to the family they were staying with, and worst of all, they stopped responding to any messages from friends and family members. Around mid-June, when the girls' disappearance was already obvious, a local woman walking through the surrounding area found a blue backpack on the edge of the small river. As it quickly turned out, it was Lisanne's backpack, which she had with her on April 1st. What was very strange was that the backpack was in really good condition, as if someone had just taken it out of the room a few hours prior. It's worth noting that if the backpack had been in Lisanne's possession for all this time, it would have been in a wet and muddy jungle, and yet there were no signs of muddy stains or dirt on the backpack. 
Inside of it, there were two pairs of sunglasses, $80 in cash, a passport, a bottle of water, two brass, two mobile phones, the sun's camera, and of course, memory card. Interestingly, according to search group and policy reports, the place where the backpack was found had been searched multiple times, which suggests that either the searches were conducted very poorly, or that someone had just left it there much later. In any case, the analysis of the found camera and phones allowed the investigators to partially recreate the girl's steps, but it didn't help in solving the mystery of their disappearance. On the contrary, what was found on the phones and the camera provided only more questions without any specific answers. The photos found on the memory card revealed that on April 1st, just a few hours after the girls arranged a meeting with the previously mentioned guide, they decided to take a walk on the Pianista Trail by themselves. It's not known why they made such a decision. It's possible that they were persuaded by someone. It's also possible that they thought it would be nice to surprise the guide and discover the part of the trail on their own. Nevertheless, the pictures from the beginning of the journey seems to be ordinary tourist photos. Just two young smiling girls, and everywhere around them, beautiful, often breathtaking landscapes. But as the journey progressed and more photos were taken, we can notice at least few bone-chilling things. The first photos of the trip were taken in the wide spacious area where it's quite easy to maintain orientation. However, several subsequent photos indicate that the girls were entering deeper and deeper into the dense jungle where it's really easy to get lost. But would two really intelligent young girls make such an irresponsible decision? What's more, on the next photos we can also see something suspicious. In three particular photos taken later and showing just Chris alone, we can't find a smile on her face at all. The girl looks very serious or even concerned. It's also weird that Lisan doesn't appear in any of the photos taken later. Chris's concerned look might indicate that the girls are in fact lost, or that when looking into camera lens, she didn't see her friend, but someone completely different. One additional photo was also found on Lisan's phone, which shows the girls in the company of two men. A third person of course takes the photo itself. It's likely however that the photo wasn't taken with the girl's phone, but rather it was sent to her later. The exact time the photo was taken isn't known, but many people speculate that it was supposed to have been taken on April 1st, around 5pm. Unfortunately, its quality is too poor to recognize faces, but it's safe to assume that the girls were still cheerful at that moment. They were smiling and posing for a photo. Also, this explains why they brought the swimsuits with them on a trip to the jungle, as if they knew they would be swimming. Interestingly, all the photos we've seen so far were taken on the same day, which was April 1st. And what's even more interesting, as careful analysis of the camera uncovered, on that day at 1.54pm, one more photo was taken and soon after erased. Of all the photos taken during this expedition, only this one photo was for some reason erased. And we have to ask the question, was the photo simply taken by accident and just for that reason was deleted by one of the girls? Or was there something in that photo that could explain the mystery of their disappearance? Sadly, we'll never know the answer to this question, but the case of erased photo is really suspicious. What's more, that day after the last photo was taken, the camera was out of use until April 8th, more precisely until the night, when between 1 and 4 am, as many as 90 photos were taken. And it was precisely this that for many proved to be really disturbing. Every single photo taken at that time looks quite weird. There were photos of trees, plants, stones and even the sky. Of course, people seeing photos like this immediately plugged into the matter of the theory of orbs and ghosts prowling the jungle, but in reality what we see in these night photos is nothing more than raindrops. Nevertheless, even though they are not related to anything paranormal, the photographs are really strange, especially a few of them. 
For example, this photo showing hair. It appears to be Chris's hair because she was the one who was wearing this collar. However, this doesn't explain why she decided to take such photo. Some suggest that she wanted to check the back of her head because she hit herself. Others suggest that she was looking for an insect or some bug in her hair. And others claim that this isn't her hair at all but only a wig and that the photo wasn't taken by any of the girls at all. The next suspicious photo is the one showing a small branch with some red elements attached. It was probably meant to symbolize something, but what? It's hard to explain the presence of such a photo on the camera of a young girl lost for a week in the middle of the jungle, unless it was taken by someone else. Another strange photo is this one, torn pieces of paper scattered on the stone. Unfortunately, although there is something written on these pieces, due to the angle of the light, we are unable to find out anything from the photo. Plus, what is this small sort of a metal object laying in the middle of the paper circle? It also looks as if this photo is also meant to have a meaning. There is another suspicious photo in which people observing the case caught a glimpse of a figure standing in a distance. Unfortunately, its close examination ultimately confirmed that what looked like a figure was in fact nothing more than a leaves of a nearby plant. Apart from these few exceptions, all the other photos look like they were taken completely aimlessly. Some theories assume that the lost girls were trying to use the camera's flash to make their presence known. They may have assumed that a search was taking place all around them and may even have heard members of the search team from afar. Other theories suggest that in this way the girls wanted to notify planes flying high above them. And others assume that they were using the camera's lamp as a light source, but this doesn't really make sense because in the case of most of the photos the camera was pointed at the sky. The strangest thing about all this, however, is the fact that none of the girls can be seen in the photos taken that night. But why? It's hard to believe that neither of them showed in the frame for a moment, even accidentally. However, that's not all. The photos found are with no doubt very puzzling, but the analysis of the girls' phones also proved to be very suspicious. As it turned out, something bad must have happened on the first day of the disappearance, just a few hours after the start of the expedition. Both Lizanne and Chris on their phones called 112 and 911 several times. The first emergency calls were made at 4.39 pm from Chris's phone and at 4.51 pm from the phone of Lizanne. Unfortunately, the girls were already out of network coverage, moreover, as the analysis of the devices showed later, the batteries on the girls' phones were already approaching 50% by the time they started the trip, which only proves that this was supposed to be a short few hours max afternoon walk. On April 2nd, just before 6pm, both phones were turned off. On April 2nd, systematically every few hours, both phones were turned on to make emergency calls. Interestingly, not every single time involved an attempt to contact the services. It's also significant that Lizanne's phone was turned on much more frequent that day and even remained like that the entire following night, which discharged almost the entire battery. Between 2.21 and 2.47 am, the weather app was also used for some reason and the phone itself wasn't turned off until 7.36 am on April 3rd. On that day, only Chris's phone was turned on, but only three times, at intervals of a couple of hours. But the emergency call was made only two times at 9.32 am. On the next day, on April 4th, Lisanne's phone was fully discharged at 5 am. Chris's phone, on the other hand, was turned on only two times, but no call was made. The next day, April 5th, Chris's phone was also turned on twice, but here we can see something strange. When the phone was turned on for the second time at 1.37 pm, the incorrect pin was entered into the device. The same thing happened on April 6th. The phone was turned on twice and on both occasions the access code input was incorrect. After that day there was a pause until April 11th when Chris's phone was turned on for a full 64 minutes but the correct code wasn't entered that day either. We have already seen the photos of what happened on that night of April 8th during the period of phone inactivity. However, the phone turned on April 11th, even though it was on for 64 minutes, it was eventually turned off, which suggests that whoever turned it on was planning to save the battery and use it again later. 
But this was the last time an activity of any of the devices took the place. After April 11th, neither Chris's nor Lisanne's phone was used ever again. Finding Lisanne's backpack resulted in another search being conducted, this time rounded to the vicinity of the river. Soon after, a few kilometers upstream, what was left of Chris was found. On the other hand, a little later, not far from where the backpack was encountered, the remains of Lisanne were discovered. A further search for remains yielded 33 bones scattered heavily around the same spot, belonging to both one girl and the other. The most shocking find was Lisanne's left shoe, which still contained her foot. After expert analysis, it turned out that Lisanne's foot along with the shoe had been efficiently cut off, and due to the lack of blood, this happened already sometime after her death. However, that's not all. Not far from the shoe, something that resembled a cloth rolled up in a small ball was also found. It was part of a skin pulled from the girl. A pelvis bone was also found, the owner of which, after DNA analysis, turned out to be Chris. Interestingly, Chris's remains were completely devoid of flesh, but Lisanne's remains were in much less state of decomposition. It was as if Lisanne had lived much longer than her friend. As you can see for yourself, the case of the disappearance of Chris Kramer and Lisanne Froon is very unusual. Many strange and hard to explain elements appear in it, and there are far fewer answers than the questions. The investigation in this case very quickly came to the standstill, and to this day it remains unclear what really happened. The official version put forward by the authorities explains the whole case as an accident, mostly by the fault of the girls themselves. According to Panama's police, Chris suffered some kind of serious injury on the trail, making it impossible for her to continue the trip. Lisanne didn't want to leave her friend behind, so they spent several days in one place, but Chris went into a shack due to her injuries and fell into a coma. Lisanne, when left alone, tried to do her best to notify the people looking for them, which could explain the night photos as well as the fact that Chris's phone was turned on, but the correct code was never entered. For emergency calls, entering the access code is not required at all. Finally, Lisanne was supposed to try getting out of the dense jungle alone, which would explain how far away the remains were found. However, such version of events, although convenient for the police, doesn't explain many strange elements. First of all, local residents claim that the trail the girls took is one of the most popular trails among tourists, and this makes getting lost in that place almost impossible. The girls could only get lost if they deliberately left the marked trail and went deep into the wild jungle. But would two young intelligent graduates have done something so stupid? Why such a sudden change in the atmosphere of the photos we saw before? First smiling, and then Chris who seems worried or even angry. Why didn't they take a single photo for as many as 7 days only to take as many as 90 photos on April 8th and on top of that in the middle of the night? Why did they only try to contact the police but not try to contact friends or family? They didn't use any apps like Messenger or WhatsApp. Why didn't they even try to send any text messages? And of course, why all of a sudden, overnight, did the person turning on Chris's phone start entering an incorrect access code? We can all wonder, but sadly, these questions will remain unexplained forever. And what do you think could have happened to Chris and Lisanne in the middle of the dense jungle? If you have any interesting theory, then don't forget to share it in the comments, because I would love to read it. And for now, thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next episode.